Welcome to this week's episode of Coffee with a Journalist, brought to you by One Pitch. Are you curious how One Pitch can help you find relevant journalists to pitch, including some of the guests on this podcast? Head to our website at onepitch.co to learn more. Today, we're talking with Fortune Health and Wellness reporter Alexa McHale. She is part of Fortune's Well team, covering life, health, mind, family, and more. During the episode, Alexa talks about the launch and coverage behind the team at Fortune Well, the who, what, why for pitches and sources she looks for, why introductions with her go a long way, and more. Let's hear from Alexa now. Welcome, everyone. My name is Beck Bamberger. This is Coffee with the Journalist. And in fact, episode 163. Thanks, team. I was losing count of all the ones we've done here. With us today is the health and wellness reporter from Fortune, Alexa McHale. First off, hi, Alexa. Thank you for being here. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Second of all, how fun is this beat? And what a time to be writing about wellness and health. My yeah. goodness. Yeah, it is a fun one. And it's super relevant today. I think, you know, just from the pandemic alone, it's really just underscored how important it is to take care of ourselves and our, you know, mm-hmm. mental health. So yeah, it's, it's been great. There's a lot of pitches around this. So yes. In fact, your last article I'm looking at here was about loneliness. And you have in the headline, is a health crisis comparable to smoking up to 15 cigarettes a day? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, <sighs> that's so sad. It's unbelievable. But I think yeah. that, you know, the Surgeon General has also been, you know, super vocal about the loneliness epidemic, you know, and it's only been really exacerbated by the pandemic. And so mm-hmm. I think that finding ways to just feel connected to one another, really focusing on your relationships, you know, whether at work or at home is really important now. So that's a huge you know, sort of pillar of wellness too. It's not just, you know, exercise and nutrition, like I think once thought. I think it's the next sleep actually. Yeah. It's finally too. becoming, yes. Yeah. How could I forget? You know, sleep? Exactly. Yes. We had a whole thing of that for the last, I'd say five years. Now people are like, Oh, sleep. Yeah. You should get that. But now it's like, yeah, you shouldn't be alone by yourself for 10 hours a day and right. just talk to your cat. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Well, again, thanks for being here. Alexa, for those who maybe aren't as familiar, Mm -hmm. how would you describe Fortune's content and then more specifically yours? Yeah. So Fortune is a business magazine, been around for a long time, but just about a year ago, last July, we launched Fortune Well. And so that vertical really covers everything health and wellness. And so I started with the team about a year ago as a health and wellness reporter under this vertical. We have a small but mighty team and and really we're focused on, you know, how to connect with our readers in a way that helps them feel better and work smarter. You know, as we talked about before, it's really just a a pivotal time where we're talking so much more about what it means to work, what it means to feel better. And I think, you know, there's this intersection of mental health and work. And, you know, that's the kind of what we're focused on. We do have you know, some main pillars. So health, which is just general breaking health news, mind. So anything, not only from mental health, but also brain health and psychology and happiness, stress and burnout, and then family. So that kind of covers caregiving and life. So that's exercise and nutrition. And then I've also been really honed in on our newest pillar, which is aging well. So anything from aging, Mm. which we're talking so much more about, and it seems to be really top of mind for people. And so for me personally, though, I am really most passionate and interested in mental health, workplace wellness, and that aging and longevity bucket. So anything where we can really make people feel better, do better at work, you know, so there is that workplace angle, which ties in our, our business fortune audience. But we also cover, you know, a range of things that don't necessarily Necessarily need to be tied to business. Got it. Did you read, by the way, Outlive by Peter Atia? I did not. I did not, but I see uh, that. I believe there's a talk on it tomorrow. So I'm, I'm oh, going perfect. To it. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Because it talks about health span, not just lifespan, which is like, okay, exactly. we live to 102, but health span. Yep. Who cares if then the last 20 years of your life, you're like a potato? Yep. That's no that way exact- to live. 
that exact you know difference between health and lifespan. I wrote an article where this one expert was telling me that the gap between the two is really about 10 years, which means yes. it's one thing to live longer, right? It's another thing to live well longer and to really optimize yes. the quality of life. And so I yes. think, you know, we can't just talk about longevity and, and try to outlive everyone. We have to talk about how to really enjoy the latter part of our life. Mm -hmm. My goal is to live to three centuries, Alexa, to touch (laughs) three since I'm an elder millennial. It's possible. It's possible. Anyway, anyway, we digress. Let's get in a little bit more (laughs) of your inbox. How crazy is it in there? Yeah. I mean, again, you mentioned health and wellness is sort of a a booming... uh, you know, thing for me to cover. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely packed. You know, if I'm if I'm out a day at a conference or something else, it definitely is. You know, hard to manage, but mm-hmm. all good things. Try I try and look at everything, you know, to the best of my ability. Mm. So does that mean you open every email? Yes. Wow, really? <laughs> this is always so shocking. I just had someone else on who is a let it ride inbox, you know, several thousand, who cares? So you look at every single, you open every email. Yeah, I definitely go through, obviously, if it's not relevant to our beat or to what I'm covering that day, I'll, you know, quickly pass it by, unfortunately. But yeah, I at least try and scroll through everything, you know, and get through it as much as I can by the end of the day. It doesn't always work. There's always some lingering, but I try. Gotcha. Okay. And then do you have an organizational system for then? Yeah. What you do with the pitches so, or the emails. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. So kind of I've made folders in my inbox that are relevant to different topic areas that, you know, over time I've realized I'm covering more and more. So for example, like I've covered menopause a little bit. So I'll have a folder for menopause or a folder for women's health, again, a folder for longevity, and then one obviously for like workplace wellness. And so I usually try not all of them are sorted because a lot of them I, you know, aren't relevant to what I'm doing. But if there's something where I'm pitched an expert or an interesting topic, I'll, you know, filter it into some of those categories. So then say, you know, there's a breaking news story or a new study on menopause, then I can kind of go into that box and see, oh, is there any experts here or anything interesting that I've been pitched around mm. this? So it might not, you know, be used right away. Or it might not you know, take that email and respond and be like, this is the person I need to talk to right in this moment. But I try as much to file things away to help me in the future. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my strategy. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And then what would you say, like, how often do you come back actually to those? Like once in a blue moon, are you like, yeah, actually 10%, (laughs) you know? You know, I will say that not all of the, you know, folders that I've created have gotten the attention. (laughs) But yeah, I think, you know, certain ones that I go back to a lot are just general doctors, you know, because I think sometimes that can be more of that breaking news where I kind of want a comment right away. Again, psychologists, sort of mental health experts, I'll usually go back into those boxes. But if it's just a general story pitch too that I think is interesting, I also try and keep note of that in a folder. But, you know, I unfortunately don't always go into that box, but doesn't mean I don't think they're super interesting or want to cover one day. There's just so much that we end up kind of having to pivot to on a day-to-day basis. Hmm. So you're mentioning some of the experts it sounds like you like to hear from. What's Mm -hmm. the total list if you want to disclose? Whom do you wish to hear from? So doctors, but like any more specifics that we could illuminate? Yeah. So I definitely think, you know, experts are key for a lot of our stories because as I mentioned before, we're really focused on helping people in their day-to-day lives. And so I think that a lot of times our stories usually have, you know, attached to them tangible tips, tangible ways people can improve their lives. And so I think that, again, you know, general doctors are always helpful, you know, if we're doing a health story. But I would say along the lines of workplace wellness, it's if someone's, you know, an author of something new with this new strategy on how to, you know, combat multitasking, for example, or, you know, someone that has a new interesting strategy for the workplace. So I would say, you know, yes, doctors, experts, you know, have credentials, but also, you know, not, let's say we're thinking about wellness at work. Well, maybe it's one step further. They just came up with this interesting program where they're really trying to have coworkers be able to engage with one another or something in a, in a hybrid environment. And so I think, you know, I think experts are great, but I think if they can bring something that really hasn't been out there, that obviously catches my attention. And yeah, I would say just overall, you know, interesting authors. I try and look through a lot of the books that I'm pitched. Yeah, if that's helpful. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, and so authors. Okay. But I'm sure fancy people with like MDs, PhDs, et cetera, behind them, not just like, I wrote a book. Yeah. I mean, I think that there's kind of a wide range of experience that hmm. we look at, you know, that classifies as an expert. I think just lived experience is also really important. That's I true. Think it's that's true. Important hmm. along with 
you know, someone that has that medical background, for example, it's also great if someone has an experience that they've had in the workplace or say someone felt undervalued and that experience helps then illuminate what the expert is saying. So mm-hmm. everyday people are also great, you know, for our stories. Today's interview will continue after this brief message brought to you by One Pitch. Are you curious to learn about the unique ways One Pitch helps brands engage with the right journalists? Head to onepitch.co and create your own custom media list in five minutes or less. Now back to today's episode. What about exclusives or embargoes? Are those ever of interest? Yeah, definitely. I would say within the subject line of an email, if it says an exclusive or an embargo, I'm definitely going to be reading it more carefully. Hmm. So that's something that I would keep of note. I think, yeah, definitely the subject line having Mm. that important. I try and look at embargoed studies regardless of if I'm pitched them just based on certain news alerts. So if it's really relevant to what I cover and it's an embargo, I definitely um, am more keen to take a look. Mm. And since you open every email, I guess it doesn't depend too much for you, Alexa, like Mm -hmm. the the subject line, but are there subject lines that really like get you up where you're like, Ooh, that's a good, Oh, I got to open that first, for example. (laughs) Yeah. I would say definitely embargo and or exclusive, uh, comes to mind first, but I would also say, you know, given that right now I'm, or for example, here, I'll say that again. Yes. So given what's trending within health and wellness, if that's sort of top of mind for us and our team and my editor at the moment, if I see that in a subject line, it really stands out. Obviously, that's hard for people to be able to predict. Mm-hmm. But I would say, you know, if, for example, we're covering a lot of longevity talk or the Mediterranean diet or something's trending and I get pitches around that, you know, I think that I'm more likely to open it. So if there's something that's kind of widely circulating in the news and someone has an expert on it or just a different angle that they're pitching, I'm I'm usually going to, you know, take that pretty seriously. And then I think, yeah, just anything around like happiness, wellness at work, again, aging, I'll, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but yes. I think I try and really look at those because that's definitely directly in my wheelhouse. And then I'll even look yeah. at that aren't just because you never know, but yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Okay. Now for those who maybe don't know you, they'd like to, how would they build a relationship with you? Yeah. I think, you know, it starts with an introductory email. You know, you can follow me on Twitter, on LinkedIn, I try and, you know, connect with people through my LinkedIn and through my email. You know, I'm local to New York area. And so I've definitely tried to grab in-person coffee chats with as many people as I can. Obviously, you know, it's it's hard to do that. It's hard to build those relationships, but it's always helpful to sort of put a face to a name. So when I can, I try to meet someone in person because then, you know, if I hear something that they might have a client Mm -hmm. for or they're you know, a PR manager and they have this expert, I'll I'll kind of remember a little bit more easily now that I had met them in person. Yeah. So that always helps. But, you know, I can't always do that. So I think just sending an email and a follow up, obviously, if I missed it in my roundup, just to sort of introduce yourself, tell me like the kinds of people that you might have that might fit my coverage. And I'll definitely keep that in mind and file it away, even if I don't use Mm -hmm. it, you know, within Mm -hmm. the next, you know, days or weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. See her in New York. Do you have, by the way, a preference? Like, do you like a morning meeting coffee? Do you want to go somewhere in the evening? Anything like that? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think that I'm in the office a couple days a week. So usually the days I'm in the office are great for meeting. Usually that's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for me. And so you know, meeting for an early morning coffee before I'm usually given my story for the day or stories mm-hmm. that I'm working with that week is always helpful. So I would say early morning coffee, middle of the week is prime. <laughs> okay. She likes the coffee. Very good. Very good. Okay. Alexa, I have a quick, this is a little speed rapid fire question session here for you. Are you ready? I'm ready. Video, phone, or in-person interview? We just touched on I know. That, but... I would say, to be quick, in-person is great, but I honestly do a lot of them over the phone. It's just easier to be able to record and take notes and kind of make it as easy as possible. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Bullet points or paragraphs in pitches? Definitely bullet points. Okay. Why? I think that it just is really easy for me to be able to grasp all the information and not miss anything when it's in bullet points, even if you highlight or bold certain things like the expert or the you know, specific angle right away, then that also helps within the bullet points. Mm-hmm. What types of sources 
do you look for and how do you want them pitched to you? So I know we talked about lived experience and the doctors and everything. Mm -hmm. The last person I just talked to was like lawyers and bankers. I mean, fascinating (laughs) story on that front. But I guess the question is, from a publicist perspective, how do you Mm -hmm. like that pitch? Even though we know you'll read everyone, but what's the pitch that you're like, yes, I want to book a call? Yeah, I think that a source that really stands out to me is someone who either has a new study coming out, a new book coming out. They really specialize, right, in workplace wellness, in mental health and aging or longevity. And, you know, they have an interesting kind of perspective and relevant perspective to share. And, you know, potentially also a timely, you know, perspective to share as well. And I think that just outlining who they are, what they've done right away, either attaching their study or, you know, the title of their book is always helpful for me to take a look. Mm, Title of the book, drop it in. Okay. Images attached or Dropbox zip file? Definitely attached. Mm, And why is that? I don't know. I think it's just easier for me to click on it right away. Be taken to another tab. <laughs> I know, same, same. I don't want to log into a thing and then it asks me a thing and da, 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 exactly. Da, da. yeah, exactly. Last clicks are better. Yes, fewer clicks. <laughs> yes. Okay, Alexa. Just for like last words, is there anything that you have to promote, emphasize, shout out, etc.? Yeah. Well, last week our Fortune Well team published our Fortune 50 Best Places to Live for Families. Yes. And so it's kind of like what you mentioned at the top. This really helped to sort of outline that living, you know, in a community that has strong support systems, you know, around people that are really going to uplift you is really important for people in a survey that was conducted on behalf of Fortune. And so definitely check that out and check out our story on loneliness that was in recent magazine edition that you can find at, you know, your local bookstore. Yes. So, you know, that's our list that came out. That was a larger project we were working on for the last couple months. So yeah. And then just, you know, keep in touch with my coverage and definitely pitch me. I'll, I'll try and get to it. And if I don't, feel free to, you know, follow up. That is so generous. I'll try to get to it. I mean, it's so sincere from you. I could tell Alexa, like she's <laughs> going to try I people. Bad when I can't respond. She's going to try, you know, <laughs> I think that's freaking great. Well, Alexa, thank you so much for doing this today. Such fun. If I was in New York, I would totally be getting coffee with you, but I will be later in September. So stay tuned and we'll take it from there. Send your book author people her way. Yes, please. Thank you. It was great. Thanks so much. Thanks, Alexa. Thanks for listening to this week's Coffee with the Journalist episode featuring Alexa McHale at Fortune. For more exclusive insights about the journalists on this podcast, subscribe to our weekly podcast newsletter at onepitch.co forward slash podcast. We'll see you next week with even more insights about the journalists you want to learn more about. Until then, start great stories. Great stories.